Nelson Family Church here in the house and those online. It's good to see everyone this morning. My name is Angela Hunt and I serve here on staff at Elson Family Church. Um, so we just want to warmly welcome everyone here today and we do have a couple of announcements and then I know Pastor Randy has a few notes for you as well. So this evening or late afternoon, four to eight o'clock, we would continue to extend the invitation to join us out at Sunrise um, Christian Church's gym, which is out on 500. Um, check with me or maybe Pastor Randy or somebody if you're not quite sure where that is. We're going to have a family game night, so some of you are like into the volleyball, maybe shooting hoops sort of thing. Then there's others like me that, you know, dominoes, board games is more my thing. Um, that has to do with knee pain, joints, age, you know. So, but please join us. We'd love to have you. You probably got the church-wide text again this morning. Feel free to reply to that. Um, if you're going to join us, bring friends. It'll be a great time. Also, next Saturday, well, actually, we have a couple th We have a lot going on next weekend. Mm -hmm. So, Friday night, um, Celebrate Recovery, we will be celebrating our 10th birthday. Um, so, if you want to join us, um, feel free to come hang out as we um, cook out and hang out and have a good time. Sunday is the Willing Women, which is the new season of women's ministry here at Elson Family Church. They're kicking off at 4 o'clock. Saturday. Saturday. Yep, Saturday. I said Sunday. I meant Saturday. Saturday, June 11th, here at 4 o'clock. They're going to be spending some time together. There's going to be a taco bar. Um, I'll be passing some clipboards again, as well as we'll be sending out some texting, email, Facebook stuff to you as well. If you have any questions, please see Kara or Katie or myself, and um, we'll get you linked up with the right information. And then Sunday is a big day for our high school grads. We have Andrew Hunt's grad open house here at Elston from 1 to 4, and Noah McBride's at their home from 1 to 5. That information can be found on the Welcome Center for those who are interested. Finally, a huge shout out and thank you. I know we had a handful of students and some grown-ups that moved a big pile of dirt that was sitting in my play yard, or our playground, <laughs> for a long time, because it was right outside the window that behind the desk. So it is much prettier. It looks great. <laughs> Thank you for the hard work. We certainly appreciate it. And on that note, I'll hand things over to you. Yep. Good morning, church. Let's stand up got a new song for you guys this morning. We just wanted to take some time to echo some of the hope that Pastor Andy was talking about and teaching about last week that we find in Jesus. The hope that surpasses all understanding, all the things that we can see and face and experience. We still have this hope that he can turn things around, that he can change us, that he can change circumstances. So we're going to sing this new song this morning called There's Nothing That Our God Can't Do. I want you to do your best to follow on the verses, but the chorus is really, really easy, and the song is kind of a, almost a chant. So I want you guys to sing out the chorus with us loud. Sing it out. Shout it out to God. Tell him how much you believe that there's nothing that he can't do. Amen. Just one touch 
My eyes are open to see My heart can't help but believe There's nothing that our God can't do There's not a mountain that He can't move Oh, praise the name that makes a way There's nothing that our God can't Let's sing that again, there's nothing There's nothing that our God can't do there's not a mountain that he can't move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can't do. Oh, just one word. You heal what's broken inside me. Just one word. And you revive it for dreams. Just one touch, I feel the power of heaven. It's just one touch, my eyes are open to see, my heart can't help but believe. There's nothing that our God can't do, there's not a mountain that He can't move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. Nothing that our God can't do. There's nothing that our God can't do. There's not a prison wall He can't break through. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can't do.
this morning. Do you believe it? Amen. That there's nothing that our God can't do. I don't know about you, but that brings me a lot of peace. In the storms and trials of life, that's the place where I can rest. And my trust for him and my faith that nothing ever happens outside of his control. Let's rest there this morning, church.
circumstance Jaira you are enough one more time oh Jaira you are enough Jaira you are enough and I will be content in every circumstance Forever enough, forever enough, always enough, more than enough. Forever enough, always enough, more than enough. Yes, sir, forever enough, always enough, more than enough. Forever enough, always enough. And I will. as a source of wisdom and truth. Your word tells us over and over and over that because of your love, because of the blood of Jesus Christ, because of the power of the Holy Spirit, we 
carry your presence with us. And so as we continue to move through this time together, as brothers and sisters in the name of Jesus, your sons and daughters, let us honor you. Let this sacrifice to you be pleasing. In the name of Jesus Christ, your son, amen. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy trust in Jesus' name. In other words, I don't lean on my own understanding, but in all of my ways I acknowledge that He is God. He is faithful. He is hope. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Sing that again. Hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood, than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust, I dare not trust the sweetest dream, but holy lean, but holy trust in Jesus' name. Christ Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness, darkness seems to hide His face, I rest, I rest on His unchanging every high and stormy gale in every high and stormy gale my anchor my anchor holds within the veil oh my anchor holds within the veil Christ alone cornerstone weak may
step when your love surrounds us and lifts us the rock on which we stand you have pulled so many of us out of the miry clay and put our feet on the rock to stay and we thank you Lord Jesus give you the praise and glory for victory after victory when we have failed and faltered but you have lifted us up out of the storms of life You've set us into a new place. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness. And when that day comes, and boy, it seems like it's just right around the corner, when we stand before the throne, we're going to be dressed in your righteousness without fault. We enter into an eternal rest. And forevermore, we don't turn back to this world that is not our home. We love you and we thank you and we do praise you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Sing it one more time, Christ alone. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak, weak, made strong. Savior's love through the storm. Your Lord, He is Lord, Lord of all. Amen. You can be seated.
Good to see you this morning. Anybody have one of those weeks? Before I get started, I do just want to um, bring a couple things to your attention. Um, a very good friend of our church family and a wonderful, sweet couple, Henry and Roxy. Roxy just lost her brother and will be headed back to Tennessee to do the final arrangements this next week. But she's been down there for a long time and has been by her brother's side, knowing full well he was going to meet Jesus. But sometimes those things take time and process and you just wait. And then sometimes you get those divine appointments that you didn't expect, and God allows you to speak into other situations while you're in the midst of a storm, so to speak. And um, also most of you um, know Doug, um, who has served alongside of us and me in our office next door and ministering to a lot of you and a lot of our church families and others in the community. Um, and uh, his oldest son... Um, and I have passed this on to our prayer team, but just kind of want to bring a lot of you on board because it just needs a lot of prayer. But his oldest son has a brain tumor, and uh, this is the third time it's surfaced. He's already had um, surgery for sure. I think maybe even two, but I, I know for sure a major surgery about 12 years ago. And um, sometimes when these things surface second and third times, the end result is not all that good. But um, they met a wonderful uh, neuro-oncologist in, because uh, he's down in Tennessee in Nashville as well, in, in your neck of the woods. And, um, but this guy really get, has given them a lot of hope. So just praying for Doug and his family, it's just a lot of, a lot of stress. And um, it's hard to imagine um, if you are in your 50s and your 30-year-old son receives a diagnosis like that. So just be praying for them. And um, yeah, so I, I, I just I just had one of those weeks, and um, um, you know we we talked about I'm going to rehearse some of the stuff that I talked about last week, and then tag it just a little bit. But we've been in Ephesians five, and and, and the main main subject matter that we've been working with is what does the Bible say about fill in the blank. And so I uh, because of the events in our country recently. And uh, I'm just like, what does the Bible say about senseless acts of evil? What's the Bible say about evil in general? And uh, so we went to Ephesians 5, and, and we talked through that, and it kind of seemed like a weird passage maybe to look at. Uh, but I think as I finished up with last week, we get the idea that if we're not filled with the presence of God, we're going to be filled with something else. And if you're not filled with the presence of God, then your propensity towards sin and evil is just as drastic as the next person. And so, um, you know, again, I just, I mean, we ask why sometimes. I mean, it just seems like the dust barely gets settled and there's another situation, an incident. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to be sensitive because I realize that I don't want to just talk about specifics and go into details about situations, but most 90% of you in this room know what I'm talking about, so I'm trying to be sensitive towards, towards our younger generation, but... Um, you know, we just have to tackle and look at that word evil and, and, and really grab a hold of that because we all have the propensity towards evil and sin. Jeremiah told us that the heart is very wicked. Who can know it? And uh, Paul also wrote in Ephesians chapter 6 that this battle is not against flesh and blood but against rulers of darkness and principalities in the air and mighty forces in the dark world. Now, I just want to stop there a second because um, recently um, Lisa and I were traveling through an area and um, you ever just like drive through and go down a certain street in a community and go, hmm, there's something right here. And we were traveling. And, I mean, we, we went through an area and I've never really enjoyed traveling through this area. Again, I'm being sensitive. I just don't want to you know, name names and that kind of stuff. And what are you talking about my city for, you know? That's my hometown. I'm not trying to do that. But it's really odd. I never 
realized it, but I, 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 I didn't mind driving around it, but I, this is the first time we'd ever driven through it, like to the heart of it. And I was like, oh, my gosh, the darkness and the lostness is overwhelming. And that's what Paul's talking about. Um, you know, there's people all around, all over the streets, but it was so dark, so heavy. And this is a community that has, has been similar to some of the other communities uh, when a lot of political stuff happened and a lot of rioting and a lot of violence. And it's just like, whew. And my first reaction is, let's get the heck out of Dodge. That's what Paul's telling us. This is what we face. Those people that I saw, that we saw in the streets, the masses of people. That's not what we're fighting against. Always remember that when you're having a fight with your spouse, it's really not your spouse. There's a spiritual issue there. So we went back to the beginning. We talked about Adam and Eve, and that's really where it began because Adam and Eve were having this relationship, this wonderful intimate, amazing relationship with God, their creator. Imagine being in that setting and you have everything to choose from for life and enjoyment, but God just says, you know, there's just one thing I really don't want you to do, and that's, that's this, the, the, the tree of life and, and, and knowledge. I don't want you to take from that, but you have all of this. It's like they snubbed their noses at God and said, no, we know better. <laughs> Any of us ever done that? Somehow we think we're smarter than the creator. We just know what, God, you really don't know what's best for me. Let me just, let's have a talk here. Let me just. So from that point on, you know, we've got this pattern of going against God's directives. And, and again, we, we, we are no different than any other human being. We, you know, when, when it feels like God's pressing in on us and he's saying, no, 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 no. But God, surely you know that I know, that we know, that that's not really. And that's the whole deception of the enemy. That's how he, that's how he tricks us and deceives us. As I shared, you know, it's like a loving parent. To say, you can have all this, just don't do this. And the child goes straight to that. Imagine. The problem is in us. The root of evil is in all of us. And I always say, but by the grace of God, there go I. I know what evil is. I've seen it. I've walked in it. I've experienced it. I know it well. I know my sin. And so as we look at this, and, 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 and God had this conversation even with Jeremiah, and Jeremiah's like, so what, what is going on? Our hearts are so wicked. Where is our hope? Because God's describing to Jeremiah, he said, my people won't listen. There is hope, and it's Jesus. He is our hope. The solid rock. When we turn to Christ, when we turn away from our choices and turn back to Christ, we have hope. So let's go to Ephesians 5. I want to read this again and break it down a little bit more and then add a few things at the end. Ephesians 5, we're starting in verse 1. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because it's... He is because you are his dear children. And just stopping there, just sometimes I just kind of get these light bulb moments, and, I, and I've said these things kind of before to you, but sometimes we just need to be reminded. But don't ever forget that your children are looking to you, and they're modeling everything that you do. Children are great observers, terrible interpreters. So if you're struggling with your child and wondering why they're acting the way they are, just take a look at the mirror and just, just examine yourself. Just spiritually do a... Do a an x-ray on your soul. The reason your children are responding and acting the way they do is because they've watched you and they're imitating you. So Paul knew this. So he's like, hey, let's take that and let's just put this spin on it and say, you need to imitate God because God is perfect in all of his ways. He's a good, good father and his ways are perfect. Put your eyes on him. Imitate him. You are his dear children. 
I know some of us don't like to hear that, right? That our kids are acting up because they are acting like us. It's one of some of the, you know, I used to hate hearing that. He looks just so much like you. I know he does. But he acts like you too. No, he doesn't. <laughs> My mom used to say that all the time about our oldest. No, he doesn't. No, he's not acting like me. Really, he's not. Maybe his mother, but not me. <laughs> Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us. He offered himself as a sacrifice for us. A pleasing aroma to God. Let's just stop there a second. You ever just thought about God just kind of hovering over and just... You ever thought about that, that sin has a smell to it? Sin has a stench to it. Wickedness and evil has a smell to it. It does. You guys are looking at me like, hmm? Just think about it for a second. Most things that we participate in, most sins that we gravitate towards have a type of odor. And God is looking for this pleasing aroma of his children that are imitating him, and he's going, something stinks. I was involved in a wedding last night. I would go into the gory details, but I'll spare you just a little bit. Bottom line is, after the heart surgery last year, I was really wrestling with, can I get back into some of the routine that I was in and just helping young couples and doing the premarital stuff and the education classes that, that I love to do, but I was so like, that just takes so much bandwidth. I'm just not sure. And so finally, yeah, okay. So I took on a couple couples and like, okay, I'll do this. And as you get into it and it's like, okay, God sustains you, gives you the strength. And so when I started, both couples were like, we just want you to give us the class instruction, but we have everything covered. We've got the place and location. We've got the efficient. We're all good. And so I'm going, because I like to do the classes and I'm okay with doing the weddings, but man, there's a lot of energy that goes there. And so then I always have a Saturday wedding, usually, and then Sunday church. And it's like, eh. So if I'm not having to do that, that's kind of a physical, emotional, mental, spiritual relief for me. So one couple graciously took off and went to Tennessee and did their deal. And I educated them, and they're awesome. They're going to be really shining stars for God's glory Congratulations. And the other couple, I believe, is going to do the same thing. But at the last minute, they asked me if I'd do a part. I was like, okay. Because they had asked me for my vows that I use. And they're not mine. I actually got them from Mike and Darla's uh, daughter and, 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 and Jeremy when they were first married. And so I loved them, and I've used them forever and ever since. And so I've adapted them just a tad. and just So anyway... I show them, oh, yeah, these are awesome. Would you do that in our ceremony? Would you just help us walk through that? Sure. So in order to kind of know what's going to go on, I got to go to the rehearsal on Friday night. So I go to the rehearsal, and Lisa and I are walking up, and everything's beautiful, and everything's pretty. And I mean, this is like, and they reversed it and did a really neat thing. They had the dinner first, and then we're going to go into the rehearsal. And I thought, well, that's kind of cool. And so we're just getting ready, like, mm, the food looks good. This is awesome. And the groom comes up to me and says, by the way, did she tell you? I said, tell me what? Um, we need you. Our guy backed out. Let's see, in 24 hours, i got to do a wedding ceremony. I'm not completely done with Sunday because the week was really crazy. You really do have a sense of humor sometimes, don't you? <laughs> sure. I would love to do it. <laughs> Knowing full well that at every opportunity... Here's the deal. Here's why I do a lot of this. I know I'm going to have a captive audience, and I can share the good news of Jesus Christ whether they like it or not. And so I do. I rarely tell all the couples what I'm going to say because then they might say, well, I don't want you to say that, so I just don't tell them. <laughs> it works. I had 200-plus people 
very captive yesterday, and Jesus and the cross was elevated. Now, that's, that's a good side of the story. Still, I'm exhausted, and I'm wiped out, and I'm going, oh, my gosh. Anyway, make the long story even shorter, we bring baby Asher, the, our youngest grandson, home with us because they got to finish up cleaning up at the wedding because our daughter was in it. Getting ready to go to bed. Something stinks in this house. Of course, he had done the duty, and you know, we got to clean it up. And in the, even after getting it out of the house, it's still, there was this residue. That's the whole point of the story. <laughs> Sin has an odor. And all night long, I was going, <laughs> something stinks. I thought to myself, how many times does God just lean over and go, man, this, this, this stinks. I don't know that we're going to get through verse 4 and 5 yet. So Paul goes on and lists a lot of things, obscene stories, foolish talk, coarse jokes. He, he's talking about all these things that shouldn't be part of the Christian life. And I just want to stop there for a minute. It's just like all of a sudden, you know, we read this last week. We went through it, kind of blew through it, and I gave you some points. And I was reading it again. I was like, you know what? There's, there's just more stuff here that we need to hear. Do you realize how much the church, not just our church, the church in general, all of those that claim to be Christians, all of those that if you ask them, do you, are, are you a Christ follower? Are you a Christian? Absolutely. And then to see the compromise, to hear the compromise, to watch the compromise, and that's when I go back to, I just think God must look over and go, Man, this stinks. What are you doing? This is foul. Verse 10, carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Carefully determine. We get real haphazard with our walk with Jesus. Have you, have you realized that, right? There's times we just get real haphazard. I mean, I, I, I'm there with you sometimes. It's just We just get going in a routine and a pattern of life. I think that's one of the reasons why God does stop us and interrupt us. As much as we hate that, because by golly, we're in control of our world and we know what we're doing. But when he stops us... A lot of times that's so that we can just carefully walk through and discern what is it that's going on and take no part in the darkness. You've, you've been called out of dark into light. You are light. So wake up. Verse 15, this is where we were mostly last week. Be careful how you live. Don't live like fools. Live like the wise. Make the most of every opportunity. In these evil days, don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine that can ruin your life. Be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God for everything. We went through a lot of that last week in terms of don't live like fools, live like the wise. There's two kinds of wisdom. Make the most of every opportunity. Which leads me to something else that happened last night. Usually when I'm the officiant, I'm done. And, and I, when I was younger and probably pre-heart surgery, I guess, I loved to hang around. I loved to do the dance and do the moves and you know, I had it all in me and all that kind of stuff. And Some of the joints don't work very well anymore and the head doesn't match the heart and you just kind of begin to look stupid out there. So I never have been able to get the line dancing down. I try. I'm always stepping on people. So Lisa, let's just grab Asher and go. I'm tired. And I was doing that because as, you know how our, and I, there's no criticism, but you know how it is with weddings. You, know, you, you sit there and you sit there. They said they only have a few pictures to take. Two hours later. I don't know if it's two hours. It felt like it was ten. But anyway, 
I'll just go home and eat peanut butter. I really don't care. As soon as I stood up, the DJ comes down the line. Folks, you can get in the line. Okay, let's go. So we go ahead and we get in line. Because after all, food. I'm hungry. And I still have a 45-minute drive. So this just makes sense. Let's get in line. We're the first line. Awesome. Let's go. Get in line. And it was good food. Really glad I stayed. And so I'm sitting there. And again, I'm just going, okay, let's finish this up. And he's tired. And I'm tired. And let's go. And somebody sits down right in front of us. And they don't say a word. I don't say a word because I don't feel like being chit-chatty. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired. All of a sudden, we begin engage in conversation, and we know them. They know us. A lot of, lot of rich history there for the last several years. And we just started talking about the Lord and Jesus You interrupted me again for a purpose. Make the most of every opportunity. And it always ends with, where's your church? And I love that, especially when they can't find it. But anyway, I love the fact that they're asking, you know, and I hope that one day maybe they'll show up. You know, yeah, I get a lot of those. And maybe you get a lot of those, but we just have to keep praying for those opportunities, those seeds to be watered and that stuff will eventually come out of that. So don't be drunk with wine. It's going to ruin your life. But be filled with the Holy Spirit. And again, wine is just representative of more things. Wine he specifically chose because being drunk on anything other than the Holy Spirit is really not good. Being consumed by anything else other than the presence of God is just not good. It doesn't end well. Can I hear an amen? amen. And probably 50 testimonies of those who have done both ways. So I said this last week, a spirit-filled person worships. They sing, they lift their voice, they make a joyful noise. It, sometimes it's out loud like on church on sometimes, and sometimes it's just this sense of, I got a song going on, but I don't know what it is, but I'm feeling like there's joy and the presence of God's with me and around me and on me and all that kind of stuff. Because really what we have to get to is there has to be an expression on the outside of what's going on on the inside. You will always express what's going on on the inside. So it's either going to be joyful and happy and praiseful, or it's going to be really gritchy and ugly. Psalm 150, let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Are you breathing this morning? Are you breathing this morning? Are you breathing this morning? Then praise the Lord. Well, I don't... I don't know. I don't sing so well. No excuse. Joyful noise. He didn't describe how it should sound. If you're uttering it, he's pleased with it. Sometimes I wonder. Mm, okay. Well, anyway, that's good. I don't feel like it. No excuse. I did not feel like coming to church today. I was tired. I wanted to call in. I don't call in to anybody. I'm it. If I call in, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Pastor Randy, I don't feel good. I'm not coming in. Well, Randy, you don't have a choice. But I really would like not to. You don't have a choice. Do the next right thing. I don't feel like getting out of bed almost every day these days, but I do it. Because it's the next right thing. No excuse, I don't feel like it. No excuse, I can't sing. Well, that's just not my personality. No excuse. If you're breathing, Scripture says, I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of everything you've done and all your wonderful, marvelous works. Those really aren't suggestions. Those are implicit commands for those who imitate Christ and follow Christ to do these things. Because when you do, when you're filled with the Spirit, when you're singing and filled with joy in His presence, you're not going to do the other. You're either walking with God or you're not walking with God. You're either following God or you're not following God. Spirit-filled person is grateful. 
He said, sing and praise and make up songs in your heart, all that kind of stuff. We were just practicing this morning, and Ron and I were just piddling around, and, and I said, you know, Ron, right there. I said, all we got to do is get a good hook and get some chord structure, and there's a song. I, that's what he was saying. Just create it out of your heart. You've got an experience. You've got life stuff going on. you you got, you got this. you got that. Sing about it. Speak about it. Declare it. Spirit-filled person is grateful. Spirit-filled person is grateful. When you are filled up with his presence, you begin to notice how good and faithful he is. Psalm 100, shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is good. He made us. We are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with... Enter his gates with... Enter his gates with... We're actually supposed to be thankful before we even begin to praise. And what happens is most of the time we're not thankful. We're carrying a bunch of junk around. We're really gritchy and we're really ugly and all this kind of stuff. How in the world then can we sing a praise unto him? And this is where sacrifice comes in. I, you know, I sit here and I look at the tragedies of the world and I look at all this stuff. How am I supposed to be thankful for that? I, I don't, I don't be, I'm not thankful for that. I'm just thankful that God is still God. Now he's still faithful. He's still good. And in his knowledge and wisdom, somehow through all of that, something's going to come out of it that will bring him glory. That's where I land my thanks. You know, the tragedies and the, and the ugliness and the evil, right there, you look at it, no, I'm not thankful for that, but I'm thankful for what God can do out of that. And some of you know that. You've experienced it. You've walked in it. So in Galatians 5, Paul gives us this tension. Remember I was talking about last week that there's this tension. The two forces are constantly battling. You, you guys understand this. You, you have the, the wrestling match going on. Paul said in Romans chapter 7, he said, I do what I don't like to do. I hate what I do and, and I don't do what I should do. And there's this thing going on in me. And this is exactly what he's talking about in, Ephesians, in Galatians 5. The two forces are constantly battling it, uh, with one another. Let the Holy Spirit lead your lives. Then you're not going to be doing what the sinful nature wants. If God is leading you, the sinful nature is not. If you're getting filled with his presence daily, if you're getting filled with his presence throughout the day, then you're not going to do what the sinful cre creature wants to do, the nature of the creature wants to do. There's this force and this, this tension going on. When you follow, verse 19, the direct desires of your sinful nature, the results are clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envious, envy, drunkenness, and wild parties and other stuff like that. Pretty much sounds like the world, doesn't it? And unfortunately, again, as I was saying earlier, there's a lot of Christian people who are very compromising in their walk. And they're sticking their toes in the cesspool. Dancing around the edge, thinking somehow that's not going to affect them. But the Holy Spirit produces love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. Because when we have some self-control guided by the Spirit of God that dwells in us, then we're not going to lean towards the Sinful desires of the sinful nature. So I want to give you an example, and then I want to just tag this with three things that I believe the Bible tells us about evil. Because we've got to see how this sin in us, but by the grace of God, some of us sometimes are just one step away. You know David, King David? You know the story of King David? And we always look at Goliath and we look at the major conquests and we look at all the things that he did. 
that were so awesome. And the Bible even says he was a man after God's heart. That means he sought after God. He ran after God. We know from the Psalms that he wrote a lot of Psalms, right? He wrote a lot of songs. He's playing the harp with the sheep, and he's saying, God, this is awesome. Hey, by the way, there's a bear over there. Should I go kill it? Yeah, I'll give you the grace to go kill it. Go kill it. Awesome. Got this ongoing, spirit-filled. Then one day, say one day. One day, say it again. He wasn't where he was supposed to be. <laughs> Second Samuel describes it as kings would normally go out to battle. Nah, I just stay back in my room. Take a little chill. Sometimes do we realize how dangerous that is? As the Bible said, in Genesis early with Adam and Eve, that's why he created Eve. Not good for man to be alone. Sometimes we just are foolish. By ourselves, sometimes we're foolish. When we pull back and withdraw, sometimes that's when the foolish, sinful nature kicks in. That's why you can't do the Christian walk in isolation. That's why he encourages to stay plugged into a local fellowship, into a church where there's some strength and accountability and support, and you won't be alone doing foolish things. And David started looking with his eyes, and he went to his thoughts, and went to his heart, and then he acted. And you all know the story. I don't have to be specific here. One commentator put it this way, most sin and evil begins with the eyes. Just as the first sin entered the world when Eve saw the fruit, Genesis 3, the fruit looked so delicious and fresh. This looks tasty. David's eyes caught him and caused him to lust, starting a cycle of violence and Anarchy in his kingdom. You know the story. Absalom, his son, came and tried to steal the kingdom away, and he did successfully for a season. His lustful eyes brought forth sin, and it cost him many years and much heartache before he was ever able to get it out of his life. This is a man. This is a man. Bible talk. This man had a heart after God. He's the dude. And one day, Because he took his eyes off of Jesus. He took his eyes off of God. He did not seek the Lord. And he turned towards the sinful nature of things that God says, that's not good for you. The evil... The propensity for sin and evil is in all of us. But ultimately, I left you with this last week. I'm going to leave it with you again. As we ask, what does the Bible say? The Bible infers that there's a decision we need to make, and that is, what influence are you under? What influence are you under? Where are you getting your wisdom? What spirit are you inviting in to lead you. Because if it's not the Holy Spirit, then it's going to be a sinful nature or some form of demonic deception. I think the first thing the Bible tells us is we've, we've already read it, but I, I believe this is the first thing. We've got to stand against it. Okay? Evil's all around us. We've got to stand against it. We've got to recognize it's not against flesh and blood, but we've got to stand against it. If we're not standing against it, it's going to invade the camp. As it has. We gotta stand and we gotta stand and we gotta stand. Having done all else, we stand. We pray, we sing, we worship. Worship is one of the biggest tools against the forces of evil. The enemy hates people worshiping. That's why it's such a struggle in most churches. 
Man, he comes in and you just, you, there's this presence. It's like this heaviness. It's like this weight. And people can't seem to shake it. It's because they're not fighting hard enough to shake through it and break it. So that true worship can be lifted to the Lord. The enemy's just got this cloud hanging over and good Christian people week after week go, oh, I guess that's just the way it's going to be. Oh, I guess it's just, it wasn't so good today. I don't think pastor did a good job. I don't think the worship team did a good job. Maybe you didn't do a good job. I'm just saying. Maybe it wasn't me. Maybe it wasn't Ron. Maybe it was you. Hallelujah! Let everything that has breath. Let everything that has breath. Let everything that has breath. Now, if you don't come in next week breathing and praising, we're going to go over this again. Second thing. As hard as it is for us to see this, he is near the brokenhearted. He's near them. He did not leave. I know this is hard to visualize, hard to imagine. He did not leave those children in that situation. He did not. I don't fully understand that. I don't fully grasp that. But as soon as those actions occurred, And those who are left with the residue and still the questions, he's still near them if they just reach out and lean in. And that's easier said than done. Amen. I know that. Not trying to trivialize it, minimize it. I know that's not easy. I will never forget. It's permanently permanently marked in my heart and mind Labor Day weekend when I got the call from my parent my parents while we're in Texas we're serving down there we're at school and my little nephew got taken out by a senseless act of evil of drunk driving I understand this He's near the brokenhearted, but it took me a lot of years to understand. Because I don't think it's just a one-time thing. I think it's an ongoing thing. Yeah, you're near. I don't get it. You're near. You're near. You said you, your promises never failed. They're yes and amen, right? You're near. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed He heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. I don't fully understand it. I just know it's a promise. And last but not least, third, God will have the final say. (laughs) Okay? We can go to the end of the book, and there we find a whole lot of good stuff. But before we do that, Psalm 33 and Proverbs 12, but the Lord's plans stand firm forever. The Lord's plans stand firm forever. His intentions can never be shaken. The wicked die and disappear, but the family of God stands firm. And we need to be reminded, again, of how the end looks. Revelation 22, John is writing, Then he instructed me, Do not seal up the prophetic words in this book, for the time is near. Let the one who is doing harm continue to do so. Let the one who is vile continue to be vile. Let the one who is righteous continue to live righteously. Let the one who is holy continue to be holy. Look, I am coming soon, bringing my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Amen. Be filled. Be filled. Ask. Continually ask. Seek and knock. Be filled. 
Be filled every minute of the day. Be filled every opportunity. It sounds grandiose, but the idea is that if you aim at nothing, you'll surely hit it. Be filled. Be conscious. Be intentional. Be filled. Pursue. Run. Run after him. Pursue him. Bring praise into the morning. Bring praise into the afternoon. Bring, bring praise. When you're feeling something, it's just like, you know, I, I, was, I was, somebody texted me the other day, and there was this, obviously something going on on that side of the fence. They text me, hey, what's the name of that song? I text that song. I get the idea because it's like I need something here. Okay, that's sometimes you just got to look it up. You got to find it. You got to put it on your phone. You got to do something. You got to shut down all of the noise and the heaviness and stuff that the enemy's trying to bring into your life, and you bring praise and joy to it. I struggled this morning. I'm so tired, like so tired, like so tired. And I go into my office for just a few minutes, and I was just like, God, (laughs) you know how bad I didn't want to do this this morning. But you're worth it. You're worth it. It's not about me doing something. It's not about me performing. It's just about me being obedient. And you are worth my obedience to step through the heaviness and the hardness and the physical and the emotional and even some of the spiritual sometimes and step through it. And I'm going to praise you anyway. I'm going to lift my voice anyway. And sometimes I'm just going to be real gut level with you. Sometimes shouting really does work. You guys, like, you know, sometimes I hear this a lot. You know, he's loud. He shouts. Sometimes I'm doing that for myself to get through to the other side so that God can be glorified and honored. And he's loud. Yes, I am. They even said that at the wedding yesterday. He's really loud. Well, that's because they were looking at me like deer in the headlights. I was like, do you get this? This is good stuff. (laughs) Wake up, pay attention. All right. So, be ye continually being filled. Ask, receive, believe, obey. Ask, receive. Believe what he wants to do in and through you and obey. You guys are awesome. Thank you for putting up with me sometimes. For many of you this morning, you have no clue who this person is, but this guy right here, stand up. Nice, short, five foot three guy. Is Rick Gaskin, and uh, again, a lot of you don't, but a lot of you do know who he is. I just, we could spend a lot of time right now, but but God has done a major work in that man. His wife has helped. Amazing work. He was telling me this morning about. Doing recovery. Oh, wow, that's a novel idea. Not only is it a novel idea, it saved your life. As it has many others in this room. Those boys, Chuck, you and I remember this well, Deb. When we were younger and traveling in a group, music group, gospel group, his dad was part of it. Man, those boys were awful. (laughs) I love you, brother. No, there was just there was just a lot of activity. Let's just say it that way. And I am, and and I just want to say this to you. I'm I'm just grateful for the work that God's doing, and what He's going to even do today. And uh, awesome stuff. But they came up here for a different reason, and he said, we got to go to Elston. 
we got to get here today. Man, they drove, drove 12 hours to go to church. What would you do today? <laughs> all right, real quick, I'm going to make a brief m- mention about all the stuff on the roof. I just want to encourage you that we are looking at different options. Now, we started talking about that one side, and then we talked about doing that wing, then we talked about doing the whole thing. In my opinion, as the board has met and talked about this, and I'm just giving you the info so that when you get an email, you go, oh, that's what he's talking about. There are three sections to this building. One, foyer, two, wing, three. Foyer, we're not doing because it's only about 10, 12 years old, but we have considered doing this wing and that wing all together because prices are constantly escalating. And with the sale of the vans, with the 25, the bids are coming in around the low 30s. We feel like that's a good decision to nail it, get it done, literally nail it, get it done so as we send that out to you just understand there will be and we 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 still need your help i know it's like times are tough times are tough i get it and i'm not sitting here pleading for money right now i'm just saying be faithful trust him trust him if he's not providing it for you you don't have it anyway so trust him as you release in your stewardship gifts unto him to be able to do his work. Stand with me. Thank you. Those online, appreciate your patience with a very rabid pastor this morning. It's good to have all of you online this morning joining us. Like I said, next week, you ain't coming in praising. We're going to do the same thing again. We're just going to repeat it, okay? I'm going to keep the notes out. We'll just go and walk through it again, all right? Father, we thank you and praise you. It's been good to be in your house. I pray right now for an outpouring and an infilling of your Holy Spirit right now over all of us. I know for some that brings some kind of a connotation. I'm just wanting to wipe out all of the, the things that our minds might do with that. We need more of you every day. And you, through Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, came to dwell within us. And we need a continually being filled. Because that's what the Word tells us to do. So we ask, we receive, we believe. And we're going to walk in obedience to what you do and say. And we will give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hope to see many of you this afternoon. I'm ready to whoop up on somebody in Euchre named John Townsend. And uh, God bless you. Have a good week.